Are push-ups your arch nemesis? Do you struggle to do even one? Don't worry, you're not alone. In this video, I'll share 10 tips to help you improve your push-ups fast and be able to perform them flawlessly by addressing the common form issues and weak links we all tend to have. Tip number one is regress to progress. Sometimes you have to take that step back to truly improve. Often we just keep trying a variation we haven't earned and then we wonder why we're not progressing. And it's because we keep cheating or compensating to do a harder variation than we can control. This can not only lead to injury, but can often keep us stuck. Proper form using the correct muscles to power the movement is what makes us efficient with an exercise. And this efficiency is what strength truly is. You can't be efficient with a move you aren't doing properly. So if you've stalled, try modifying the move even just one step backwards, off an incline instead of off the ground, to refocus on what you feel working and make sure everything is engaging correctly in the correct order. Get the correct muscles working. While it stinks to step back, it can really help propel you forward. Tip number two, run Run through a setup checklist. How often do you do a move and just simply do it? We don't consider how we're positioning each part of our body or run through what we need to engage and how it needs to be engaged to do the move. While we want this process of engagement to become natural, it can be really helpful starting out to have this checklist we run through to make sure we're actually using everything correctly. So as you set up for the push-up, run through a checklist of what you often struggle to engage to make sure you've set yourself up to do the move well from the start. Don't just rush through hoping to mimic the movement. A great setup checklist for overall form may be, number one, set your hands outside your chest and spread your fingers to drive down hard into the ground. Number two, engage your back to unshrug your shoulders. Number three, brace your abs, even squeezing your glutes to do a slight posterior pelvic tilt. Number four, Drive back through your heels as you flex your quads. This sequence helps you make sure that you put yourself in a position to engage the correct muscles right from the start. Tip number three is driving back through your heels. Often we think about the push-up as an upper body or even a core move, but our lower body needs to be engaged correctly if we want to be efficient with this movement. If we push ourselves forward over driving back, we can actually overload our upper body more, and we can make it harder on ourselves for our body to move as one unit. Instead, as you set up for the push-up, drive back through your heels and feel your quads flex. This will help you maintain proper plank alignment as you lower down. It can help you avoid your butt going up in the air or shifting backwards or forwards. It can even help you avoid those hips sagging because of the tension you've already set up through your legs. Tip number four is set up at the bottom. If you're struggling with that press back up in a push-up, it's key you target that engagement from a dead stop. A great way to do this is actually to set up at the bottom of a push-up, whether you're using an incline or doing push-ups off the ground. Just realize this is harder than lowering down because you have to have everything engaged before you press up. You may even find you need to modify this movement when you start from the bottom up. But set up at the bottom of the push-up, run through your checklist to make sure everything's engaged, take a big breath, and then focus on the solid push back up as you exhale. Too often, we only work on moves top down instead of bottom up. But especially if you're struggling with that transition to press back up, this can be a key way to improve your push up. Tip number five is to practice stick point holds. Often there's a part of the push up we struggle with the most. It could be maintaining a straight plank position at the bottom or in that push up about halfway up. By using some push up holds in even our warm up activation work or as a burner to end our workout, we can build our strength endurance by holding in these positions we struggle with. You can not only cycle through these positions in a single interval, pausing in a spot for five to 10 seconds, but you could also do a single longer hold, just setting up directly at your stick point. As you hold, run through everything that you feel working and even how you're setting up for that position. This can really help you ingrain that positioning and recruit those muscles more efficiently. Tip number six is to use a band. While I love incline pushups to help build up, the more variations of a move we can include, the more we can help ourselves really learn to engage everything correctly. Sometimes with incline or knee pushups, we can feel like we're getting strong Stronger, but still staying stuck. The band is a great way to reduce resistance on your upper body, but work through that full range of motion off the ground. It's also a great way to increase your strength endurance or build up the number of reps you can do from your toes off the ground. To do this, set up a band at about elbow height in a rig and position yourself in the push-up with the band under your chest. You can set the band up higher if you do need more assistance or have a higher stick point. Then lower down performing the push-up. As you get deeper in the lower down, the band will take away some of the load on your upper body and even add assistance as you push back up. Tip number seven is to focus on pushing the ground away. Often when we think about just lifting our body back up, our butt goes up in the air, or some version of the worm tends to happen. We lose tension at our foundation and stop focusing on what we actually should feel engaging to press back up. If you think about a bench press, your focus is on pressing the weights up. You want that same focus in a push-up to best activate your chest, shoulders, and triceps. So with the push-up, focus on pressing the ground away with your hands. This can help you avoid your elbows flaring way up into a T-shape with your body, and it can really 
really help remind you to power that press with your upper body. The tension down to the ground is so key if we really wanna engage our pecs, shoulders, and triceps to power the movement. Tip number eight is to include activation work in your warmup for your back. Proper scapular control makes for a more powerful press. If you wanna protect your shoulders, neck, and elbows as you work to improve your push-ups, you wanna make sure you include scapular mobility and activation work in your warm-up routine. If we're able to properly move our shoulder blades, we'll be able to engage our chest more efficiently during the push-up. In your warm-up, consider even a scapular wall hold as part of your activation series. This will open up your chest and engage your back pulling your shoulder blades towards your spine. It's a great way to make sure your back is ready to work and support those shoulders throughout the push-up movement. It's also a great way to improve your posture if you are including extra pressing work during your workouts. Tip number nine is to use cluster sets. If you wanna be able to do more push-ups in a row, you have to do more push-ups in a row to build up that strength endurance. So instead of modifying the push-up over the rounds of your work, think about designing it as cluster sets instead. Set a total number of reps for the round, say even the goal is six, and break it down into sets of what you can do well, even if that's only two at a time. Do two reps, rest 15 to 30 seconds, then do two more. Do this pattern, even performing singles if needed to hit the six reps, then rest for longer between rounds. This way you're still hitting your goal number of reps but with a harder variation so you can really train that full movement. By resting for so short, you don't let your body fully recover and you're sort of tricking it into believing you're doing six reps in a row. You'll see your strength endurance and push-up reps increase quickly implementing this technique. Tip number 10 is to include anti-extension core work. The push-up is is basically a moving plank. And while planks are a great move to include, they can also get a bit boring, especially if you've just been doing the basic front plank. So if you wanna mix up your core work in a way that will really help your push-ups, consider other anti-extension core exercises as part of your finisher to your workout. It may be simply including a bird dog version of the front plank or even a dead bug variation that helps. Anti-extension exercises are exercises that work your abs to avoid arching of your lower back. This can even help you avoid your hips sagging during push-ups. You may even include an anti-extension move in your warm-up to get your core ready to work and establish that mind-body connection prior to your push-ups. You just wanna make sure that you're not doing so much that you're actually fatiguing your abs before you go into that work. Remember, the key to success is consistency and practice. So make sure to incorporate these tips into your workout routine and track your progress over time. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week.